Hello everybody and welcome to this video. If you make a Google search on reverse charge mechanism under GST, you will come across a lot of articles that say that reverse charge has been deferred till 31st March 2018. However, this information is partly true because reverse charge for URD dealers has been deferred but other reverse charge for notified goods and services have not been deferred. So I am putting together this video to clarify the the position and to give an overview of the reverse charge mechanism and how it operates. So today we are going to take this topic in the following manner. What is reverse charge? When is reverse charge applicable? And the procedure when reverse charge is applicable. So what is reverse charge? Normally under GST, the supplier of goods and services prepares an invoice and in that invoice charges the GST. This is called normal charge. In certain cases, however, the supplier is not supposed to charge the tax. The recipient is responsible for paying the GST on such a transaction and this is known as reverse charge. Now, question that might arise is why would the government do something like this? The reason could be that for certain industries and sectors which are unorganized, the supplier may not be able to comply with the GST procedure and hence the burden is put on the recipient of goods and services. Okay, going to the next topic. When is reverse charge applicable? So reverse charge basically are of two types. One, when an unregistered dealer is supplying to a registered dealer, the registered dealer is responsible to pay the GST on such a transaction. This is covered by section 9 subsection 4 of the Central Goods and Services and the State Goods and Services Tax Act and section 5.4 of the in Integrated Goods and Services Tax Act. Now this kind of reverse charge has been deferred till 31st March 2018. The second type of reverse charge is for notified goods and services. This is still applicable and on all transactions un undertaken today. So what are these notified goods and services? So for goods, as you can see on screen, there are five goods on which this is applicable. I am going to make this PPT available so you can study it in more depth. But for these goods, by the supplier that is mentioned in the table, supply to the recipient that are mentioned in this table, reverse charge is applicable. So the supplier does not have to charge the GST in the invoice, but the recipient will have to pay the same. Okay, moving to services. So first is import of service. Import of service made by any person for business purposes is covered, made for personal use is not covered. So you are say, paying subscription for a software which you are paying in US dollars and you are using this for your business then on such reverse charge will be applicable. Now next hot favorite is goods transport agency. So a GTA supplying service of goods transportation to a business entity being a partnership firm, a body corporate, a cooperative society or a registered person under GST reverse charge is applicable. Next is services provided by an advocate, a senior advocate or a firm of advocates. So again important thing to understand whenever you take legal services from an advocate, you will be responsible for paying the GST. Obviously this is for business purpose, not for individual use. Next is sponsorship and after that is Services provided by a director to a company or a body corporate. Something pertinent to note here is that the salary drawn by a director will not be covered by this clause because salary is not covered by the GST net at all. Okay, now there are other services on which reverse charge is applicable. However, I'm not covering the same. You can go through it uh, when you download my PPT. Now what is the procedure when reverse charge is applicable? 
first and foremost you will have to make a payment voucher and in this payment voucher you have to give the details of HSN, you have to give the details of the tax rate and things like that. After that you need to make the invoice. In the invoice again the tax rate that you are supposed to use is going to be the tax rate applicable for such goods and services. Now, who will you make the invoice to? This is a very important question. The answer is you need to make the invoice to yourself. Why do you have to do this? Because for the purpose of claiming input tax credit, if the input tax credit for such a transaction is available, then the duty paying or the tax paying document is this invoice. So self invoicing is very important. Otherwise, the input tax credit will not be available. And the next, you need to pay the GST in the current month. And the input credit of this, if available for your transaction, which will need to be seen um, with light of the in, in the light of the other provisions of the Act, will have to be claimed in the next month. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for a patient hearing, and uh, I hope this has been uh, useful. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel to receive such updates regularly. Thank you.